Yo, what it is, what it ain't, what it could be. It is your boy, Kid Poetry. If you ain't know, it's me. It's your girl, Wildflower of UGS Music. And this is He, he said, said, She, she said. said. And we back again, you, again. Bu- you blood clot motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Episode A Ocho Un. I think that's what it is in Chinese. I don't know. I think that's one. I'm fucking up. But either way, <laughs> y'all not worried about that. Y'all came here for the salacious shit. You came here for the inside tea. Mm. You came for your underground artists, all that hot shit. All and right. our opinions, most importantly. Okay, you guys. So we're going to get into our first topic. Today, we're going to uh, talk about some music topics first and then get into some mess and then probably go back to music. You know, we right, like to give right. you both because, you know, y'all like variety, right? Of course. Okay. The spice of life. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so... Our first topic, uh, we just want to talk about some regular, regular music conversations that you might have with your friends. Yeah. Um, so, so who do you listen to on a regular basis? Just like, in uh, general, like, just throw me some people, you know? I ain't gonna lie. I, I'm not gonna pander to y'all niggas. <laughs> I fuck with underground rap. Okay. I listen you. to... He yeah, said they're not gonna yeah. pander. <laughs> nah, nah, I'm not, I'm not a panderer. Okay. Um, God. Who do I listen to straight off the back, man? You already know I fuck with <sighs> Rock Marcy, man. Okay. If y'all don't know who Rock Marcy is, of course, I'm sure she put the little photo right there. Rock Marcy is a super hard artist from fucking uh, upstate New York. Really dope. Upstate New York been coming together with some real dope artists okay. lately. Uh, Stove God Cooks. Man, if you listen Stove to one God. of our other podcasts, yeah, you heard of Stove God? I've yeah. never heard of Stove God uh, Cooks, I don't think. You gotta check my boy out. Listen, he's probably one of the best, like, the underrated name makes you rappers. Check it out. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He talking that shit. If you okay. like people who talk that shit, Stove God's talking that shit. Um, God, Benny... 38 Spash. Um, God, outside of that realm, who am I listening to on a daily basis? Um, Babyface Ray is somebody I find myself listening to a lot more now. Uh, I'm a big Sada Baby fan, too. I so. fuck with yeah, Sada yeah. Baby. So if okay, I can, I yeah, really if I can catch my whole Detroit playlist, if I throw <laughs> that on, of course he gonna jump in I really, I really fuck with Sada. Like, I really feel like he's, he's a good rapper. You know what I'm saying? Because Sada is a... His excellent rapper. his delivery and wordplay. Alone, his wordplay, his wordplay is top notch. It really is like, like he he's saying the like the most. It, it's clever, yeah, and 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 it's also comical. Yeah, it's comical, not in the fact that he's freaking yelling, but the stuff that, that he said. Uh, said that he had a punchline <laughs> about Christiana Yamaguchi or something like uh, one of his last songs. I was like. Yeah, you he's gotta funny. actually know something to listen to Sada sometimes. Like, if you don't know nothing, you 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 be like, who the fuck is that? Mm-hmm. But when he puts it in context to him, I don't know, talking about skating over niggas or you know what I mean, right, anything right. crazy. Then you know he's really good right. with that blending the blending. Yes, yeah. and and that, I was just thinking that really like I love like hood ass artists who can like give me more even yes. though his content is ratchet yeah it's not ratchet and simple it's not ratchet it's and poetic bad. yeah it's poetic. if you will you know it is you and know i love it because yeah he that's that that'd be my argument with rap all of the time i try to tell y'all that don't just don't just take a picture of outside and show it to me make it vivid i want to like that's the difference between photography and just anybody with a camera anybody can do it but are you gonna make it artistry are you gonna make you know what i mean are you gonna make me think when i'm listening to it like Evoke oh some snap, sort of emotion. that's how that yeah. yeah relates to that it it builds a whole picture in your mind y'all nigga, please do that please you gonna hear that a lot from me just please do that okay well yes that's you know you think- side of that nigga. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I like, I like Sada Baby, but um, that was good. That was a good little. Yeah, list. I'm yeah, definitely yeah. gonna check out Stove God Cooks. Yeah. Um, so for me, artists that I listen to on a regular basis, number one, P. Airborne. Uh, number one, baby, number one. Pierre over there. Yeah. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> I love Pierre's music so much. And the thing about is it Pierre is... Is Pierre a rapper now? Okay, so I would not c- categorize him necessarily as a rapper. 
Okay. I think that he's more like an artist. I, I, I call him one of my favorite artists. Okay. So what is he doing? Because I and most people may know uh, Pierre primarily for As his a produ production. Oh, yeah. Which was a whole lot of alliteration. Just now. Yes. <laughs> but, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that because that is how a lot of people know him. And yeah. that is how I got onto him as well is for producing for uh, Playboy Cardi and Young Nudie. Yeah. And um, so that's how I got onto him. But then I started listening to his own music and like it just was such a vibe. It was such a different uh, feeling and sound. Um, you a vibe ass nigga. Yeah, I know absolutely. That's your thing. It's a vibe. It was a different feeling and sound than, um, but at the same time, familiar. Got it was it. a blend of all of those things, and also like he's not the most lyrical, and I do actually um, appreciate it. No, but I I count him as a mumble rapper. I really do count Pierre as a mumble rapper. Sure. And I don't. I know that he doesn't agree. Going off of some interviews that I saw, he doesn't think he's a mumble rapper. And I'm not even trying to come at him like you don't think you're. But that's just my opinion. When you Sometimes, produce for the mumble rappers and stuff, and that's kind of the sound to you that you cater to, it would only make sense that you would fit into that genre. I get you don't want mumble rap is a derogatory term per se i disagree i think that it doesn't have to be we need to move it away from that it's what a type of it music mumble? it's a well that's what the freak they're doing and that's gonna make that, it derogatory because well not necessarily this is how i feel about that mumble rap is a thing that absolutely exists and they're getting their money okay mm -hmm. we call it mumble rap because y'all niggas be mumbling sometimes you have to look up the lyrics to understand what you're saying but if you like me and you listen to pierre like every day you probably don't have to do that you kind of catch on mm -hmm. but you have to and there's a difference from doing that then uh there's there's a lot of music out there you don't have to do that too because it's audible you, mm -hmm. you can understand what they're saying that's why we call y'all mumble rappers because y'all are melodic and y'all are so melodic that like sometimes we can't understand that individual words that you're saying so that's all Pretty that is much. to me and that's not derogatory to me i feel like it's one of those words that is like that does have a negative connotation that mm -hmm. we need to like move away from because i just think it's a genre of rap well even when i say derogatory i mean you are entitled to feel how you feel about it like being negative but it is a derogatory term even the same way conscious rap has become a derogatory term at the same time, like they like people will brush you off or whatnot if you're conscious rap or if you're the you know what I mean mm -hmm. because of the style of music per se, and that doesn't at its basis okay. make that derogatory. So let me correct but it myself. Can be perceived to everyone else, these terms are derogatory. Right to me. On this show, it's not. Yeah, mumble rap is not. <laughs> it's not. And we just we're, we're too we're too musically inclined to, you know, do that to to water it down to Absolutely. being just that. No, mumble rap, conscious rap are genres. Mm -hmm. They're genres. You know what I'm saying? And you can yes, and you can look at it negatively if you want, but I don't. Yeah. It's just punk rock. You know what I'm saying? Rock. Exactly. Psychedelic synth pop, regular pop, whatever. Um, but you know that was just to explain my love for Pierre and why I, I listen to I love the music and stuff like that. So is but, it just Pierre all day? No, 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 it's not. <laughs> but because he's a mumble rapper that I love, mm -hmm. I had to like bring that together because like I don't have like a whole list of mumble rappers gotcha. and people okay. usually and you know what I'm saying as a respectable uh, musical opinion, people usually don't have a whole bunch of lists of mumble rappers. They usually kind of have a big eclectic type of taste. Right. So yeah, he's the first one that I brought up because I do listen to Pierre like every day and I, I, you guys, he's going on tour, okay, right now and like he's going to be in Memphis. Is he taking everybody that he produces with on, on tour? tour? I don't think so. Well, I mean, he might, like, but he's he not advertised. He's so he not, he not uh, I don't know. Oh, those people, yeah. But, you know, he got other people that he signed. I thought you were referring to them. Mm. I don't know about all that. But I do know that he's on tour this weekend. He's going to be in Memphis on, like, the 16th, I think, or 15th or 16th, something. I know because I can't go. So, um, I am going to a Snow the Product concert in a couple of weeks. And you know hey. I'm going to talk about that and show some footage. But, um, but yes, that was way too long, you guys. Maybe I should just make a whole other video about my love for Pierre. Yeah, I also listen to this group called Wild Nothing. Um on a regular basis, uh, almost every day. Now, I don't, I can't say that I like them better than Tame Impala. 
Okay. But yeah, all, but like right. but they are they're up there as, as my favorite band, like one of them. Really. I really love their music. It's, it's psychedelic it rock. Yeah. yeah, it's type of it's like it's like Tame and Paula kind mm. of, but just a little more audible actually. They a use a Beach Boy vibe. Not here. actually Beach Rock vibe. Really just more like a lot of sit not even a lot of sits. More like um mm. They're like Tame Impala with less effects on their voice. Mm -hmm. You know, hate to compare it like that, but that's the best way I can explain it. Because that's the thing it. I remember about Tame Impala. They, they have, a have lot like of the effects. Beach Boy kind of high pitch. High pitch. pitch. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they do a lot of effects on but their it's voice. Dope. It's, it's dope. Absolutely, I, I love Tame Impala. But um, yeah, Wild Nothing. Um, I do get into my female rap bag. Okay. I really do. I listen to a lot of female rap. Um, female obviously, rap. I, I love Nicki Minaj. If you know me, you know that. I don't have to go on. I'll have to leave it right there. I love Nicki Minaj. What's your favorite Mick, Nicki Minaj bar? Oh, God. That is a crazy question to ask me <laughs> on the spot. I can't even. We got limited time today. I'm not even going okay, to Okay, what are your favorite? You got to give me an iconic Nicki bar real quick. An iconic In Nicki bar. <laughs> Oh man, um, what's the last Nicki song I listened to? I'm like, you can always give Okay, us a how about this? Okay. I won't give you a, a bar, I'll give you a whole song. Oh shit. Grand Piano by Nicki Minaj, y'all. First of all, she's singing in this song. The lyrics, the lyrics to this song were like, first of all, bitch, how did you find out my business? <laughs> and why are you singing about it, telling it to everybody? Mm. I wanted to cry. Oh. At some parts of that song, like it's just she, she was she was saying stuff that I felt, and it also shows uh, the great versatility that is uh, Nicki Minaj that people act like they don't know or they probably don't, but she's very versatile. Um, but um, another one of my favorite female rappers that I listen to on a regular basis is Rico Nasty. Listen, love her style physically and musically. Yeah. Like I love the whole weird. Yeah. Rico type of is. scary sexy vibe and yeah. also all her yelling that she does in her songs and all the aggression and mixing with <laughs> okay mixing it also with femininity because she does talk yes. about love and the you know and just but she doesn't harp on that softness but she mentions i just i just love the way the combinations of things that rico nasty yeah is. i like the punk rock vibe of it mm -hmm. because like you said yeah she She's not afraid to be vulnerable, mm -hmm. but also be full of like the confidence and bravado and you know, All of that. screaming at people. Yeah, 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 I love it. And to close this little topic off, I do have to mention two more uh, people or maybe three more people. Oh God, I know one. I know um, one. So another person that I listen to on a regular basis is Cody Shane. Okay. Vibey music. I love her voice. Um, she definitely needs to be a lot bigger than what she is. I don't know when it's going to happen or what it's going to take. She reached out to me one time. But it's going to happen. All right. And just to keep it on brand, we're going to give you some more hip hop questions. You know what I mean? We're, mm -hmm. just, we're doing it a little light today. Yeah. Um, shit, <laughs> where do we want to start? I know you had the questions written down. The first question is who do you dislike? Which rapper do you dislike? Oh. Huh. Rapper I dislike. Um, hmm. I I don't like that nigga Stunnafo Vegas. Okay. I know it kind of disappeared, <laughs> like the whole. Dang, I forgot about him. You couldn't see uh, the baby without seeing this mm -hmm. little ugly, long head nigga. Yeah, but Stunnafo Vegas, I'm glad it stopped. Okay. That shit just, it wasn't catching on. It wasn't catching you for me either. You were not the baby. And, yeah, things okay. pass. They have their time. <laughs> no, that's true. I'm you sorry see, you made some money. Yeah, hope, yeah, <laughs> you know, but that's a, that's a good one. I forgot about yeah. him. Um, my rapper that I would say I dislike, uh, I had to think hard about this. Jack Harlow? Uh, no, 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 no. I like Jack Harlow. Okay. I like him. He just he might be a little overrated. Might be, but I like him. Yeah. Um. Okay. So I had to think hard on this, which is weird because I know that there's a list of rappers yeah, that yeah, I don't yeah. like. Me you too. Know? Me too. That one um, came right at the end. Like, <laughs> I had to remember. I, oh, I do not fuck with that. Nigga. That is so <laughs> funny. But yeah. Um. I don't. I don't really like French Montana, man. Wow. I don't really like French Montana, and it's just I because, can get it. It's because like there's nothing about him that it. makes me. He makes good songs. Yeah. Okay, he has great features though, mm -hmm. and like I, I just feel like um, he's one of those artists that may hide behind his features, but he may have some good songs by himself. There's just nothing about him that makes me want to look into that. Okay, I can understand that. He is kind of like 
like a mediocre. Yeah, something that you could pass on. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't, you don't really miss anything out of like if hip hop. Not having him on the yeah, playlist is not going to be a detriment like to your a party. History class. You can do the whole <laughs> history of hip hop without that's ever true. including the unfortunately, French Montana. unfortunately, that's true. And we're not we're not trying to hate. We are we are no. telling our opinion about as consumers. You can ask about music. Him. Listen, Mac and Cheese Three probably one of my favorite mixtapes ever. I could take you to. <laughs> Yeah, yeah he's he's one of those passable ninja, yeah. passable artists to me. Um and like I said, like it's certain artists that if you don't have them on your party playlist And I think the he's not reason one. he is French Montana is so big is for shit outside of rapping. I think they say French Montana used to have like you know how they used to do the D V D shit where niggas go around in different hoods and they have like oh probably the camcorders back yeah in the yeah, day. yeah 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 he had one of those like smack and oh, okay how 50 used to go around or whatever i think french used to do that too oh okay so well shoot i guess that's what made him popular because i'm like i get i get the appeal french is kind of like you know i mean the new york uh hispanic puerto rican i don't know moroccan his, yeah he's moroccan a rapper that grew on you. Who's a rapper that grew on you? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh goodness gracious, y'all. Yeah, we, we had are. we had a change of scenery, as you can see. Yeah. You we, know what I'm saying? Pull some Rick and Morty shit. Y'all didn't even know. <laughs> exactly. Now, in the first half of the video, with the different background, we talked about uh, who do we listen to on a regular basis. Yeah. We talked about more specifically, like who's our favorite artist, who's artists that had grown on us, and things like that. Um, Shout we, out to Don Tolliver. I didn't get to throw him in there, man. Don Tolliver been doing his mother <laughs> thing lately, man. I've been listening to him a lot lately. But anyway, continue. Yes. Yeah, so, so wait, <laughs> is that somebody you listen to on a regular basis? Yeah. Okay, now okay. It's, it's it's crazy. Yeah, I've been listening to him like consistently. All right, that's pretty cool. So um, what we didn't get to cover in the first half was y'all's favorite portion, our favorite portion, which is what happened to. So we'll be right. bringing that to you in a few minutes, um, and then get into a little bit of bullshit to close the episode off. Yeah, it is. How's that sound? Sounds great. Okay, so what happened to? Yes. You guys, my what happened to today is Hopson. Hey. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Most of you probably probably know who he is. If you don't, he is a rapper from the West Coast, from California. Um, if I could describe him with, to people who don't know him at all, he's like a black Eminem. Black, yeah. Uh -huh. Black Eminem. That's I don't know the if he, boy. I don't know if he likes that. I think that he probably spoke out against Liga, that a few years ago. know exactly what it is. But, like, I don't know what Liga else he would playing. expect us to say. You know what I mean? Exactly. And, and that's not the worst thing to be compared to. So. No, hell no. Hell of a uh, Compliment. Yeah, you for know? sure. Um, but, yes, you guys, Hobson. So, he is a very lyrical, energetic, uh, shocking type of rapper. Like mm -hmm. I said, Eminem. Um, I would say it's like Eminem with more... Not even Eminem with more energy, y'all. Like, honestly, there's, like, a lot of similarities early, between their style. It was, like, early, early Eminem. Okay, Ear yeah. Hobson sounded like early Eminem. The yeah. Eminem that you got when he was, like, angry mm -hmm. and going direct. Of course, that's still who Eminem is. But, yeah, Hobson is more of, like, the adolescent just... Raw, going at you, spitting at your mom or the people close to you. It's like that was the kind of thing that you got from Hobson early mm -hmm. in his career, like mm -hmm. with the ill mind of Hobson, which was really dope. Like, nigga did like 20 of those things. Like, right. I was yeah, just about yeah. to mention that. The uh, ill minds. Like mm -hmm. you said, there's there's multiple ones. I've only seen up to like 11. There might be more. Who knows? Uh, who, um, I'm sure nigga But stop. like we said, it was, it was like a series. The ill mind was him spitting about um, things that was on his mind, you know? A lot of it was personal, a lot of it was angry. Mm -hmm. um, some of it was geared toward his label at the time that he was having a lot of issues with. Um, I believe his label at the time was owned by like Easy es Baby Mama, one of them. Mm -hmm. um, you can go, if you look that up, you can kind of see that they have a, a history that is not so good together. Right, right, right. You know? I, I feel like it was some tweets or something. That came yeah, yeah, it was time. a whole bunch of stuff about that. And um, so, yeah, he'll be rapping about that. He'll be rapping about his annoyance of uh, people who don't rap or people who lack skills at all. Like, right, he, he was right, just right. saying a lot of angry Listen, stuff. It was but I was hip hop, though. It. it was hip hop. It was, it was absolutely well crafted. 
You yeah. know, it was art. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't BS by any means. He's actually a very dope And lyricist. did he used to do something like with his face or something like that? Uh, okay, so he, another thing about Hobson that I can't believe I didn't say at the forefront is that he, he wears these contacts. Yeah, white contacts, these I think. These glowing ass white contacts. They're super bright colored. And he, he has, you know, the little slits in his eyebrows, or whatever. So that's his look. Mm-hmm. And um, I think I remember back then him saying he did this. To, you know, basically for attention. Yeah. He know he can spit. And he of knows course. that he's talented. But yeah, he also Yeah, he's done knows. a lot of cool shit. Like, I remember he did, like, a song to sound like the other niggas and shit. Like, I think, like, Amigos sounding song at one time. It was clearly a parody. Mm-hmm. But, but he probably it still it. sounded good. Yeah, because yeah. it's Hobson. And exactly. he's, like, super creative. But just yes. to show that he does these kind of things for attention because he understands that when you are a pure hip hop artist, you get overlooked sometimes. So you got to have a gimmick like the rest of these people. And sometimes their gimmick may feel real to them. Oh, well, my nigga, it's a gimmick nonetheless. So, yeah, Hobson definitely had his shit, but super dope rapper. That was a real good one, man. You got anything else you... Yeah, actually. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, now that we've got the history of Hobson, he hasn't really been dropping like that um, throughout the time that he was really hot, which I would say was like 2013-ish. Well, maybe I'm wrong. That's the time mm-hmm. that I got on to him. Gotcha. Um, but now, in 2022... The time between then, he hasn't really dropped a lot of things, and he hasn't really been as active as some of the people that we talk about on this segment. Mm-hmm. However, he did drop this year um, the song title right here. I listened to it, didn't really like it like that. I don't really mm-hmm. have too much to say about the new track, mm-hmm. but I do have something to say about some other new stuff that he's doing. He has this group called the Future Kings, who mm-hmm. um, he's kind of like you know, managing or had right. signed them to his label or something like that, where he's okay. over this group, right? And the amazing thing about it is the type of music this group does, you would not think Hobson would be behind something like this. Their their music they is just like too... New age, like... Very, very new age friendly, very of the times, very okay. f- um, high energy, uh, positive, fun type of music. I wouldn't say that there. I haven't heard any tracks uh, from them that are deep. Hops okay. and deep. Right. I haven't heard anything from this. It's more fun. They're dancing ass niggas. Uh, they actually were contestants on America's Got Talent. Ah, um, uh, okay. Uh, some seasons ago. So maybe he's trying to go crossover. You I know? think that he's he's yeah. I think that he's starting to see that. Okay, this is what I probably should uh, look at. You yes. got to look at hip hop as like a brand and a business yeah. now. So it's like, how can I appeal to demographics outside of my own? Because his is more of a niche market. Yes, with Hobson. definitely, definitely. And if you know, being in cahoots with a group like this, see, because he's not just above them, like you know, helping them, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like he was featured in a song, and he was even in a video. I'm, I'm gonna show it to you, actually. Like. It's yeah. really entertaining, the video. And it's really cool to see Hobson be versatile in that. Well, I can't even say that he hadn't shown us this before because he's rapped on all types of beats. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With the same type of content. But he's he is, he's one of those people who, who can rap his content on different type of beats. Right. So he did that with the Future Kings in um in the video. Hmm. That, um y'all, sometimes I just can't remember titles. I don't have my paper here today. So, you know, we're going to be putting a lot of things at the bottom of the screen. But, um, but yeah, you guys, that's Hobson. If you didn't know who he was, I hope you know now. You check it out. Check out the Future Kings. Hey, check out Ill Mind. You, you know exactly who we're talking about. When we put... <laughs> you see who that is, man. You know exactly who Hobson is. Right. But that's, that's uh, no, all I got. Really dope one, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Hop, man. I think he was a double XL freshman at one time, too. I wouldn't be surprised. I just don't yeah. remember. I, I forget what year that was. Maybe maybe 2012 or something like that. I'm, I'm pretty sure Hobson was on one of those. Which is funny because it seems like, for the most part, People that end up being on the double XL freshman cover Mm -hmm. end up being like phenomenal artists or people who have a long, you know what I mean, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. outstanding career. Even if they're good or not. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. It gives you that look where people can always go back and remember, oh, we saw this person here. Yeah. And then go off of that. Yeah. And funny to say, my. what the fuck happened to is another double XL freshman 
by the name of Blue. Blue is a super dope artist coming out of uh, Los Angeles, California. He was on the Double XL cover, or the freshman cover, I want to say in 2009. And 2009 was the year where a lot of dope artists, man, I think that was the year I, probably the year prior, 2008. I, Showing my age now. <laughs> but I was in eighth grade, what, 2008. Back in that time, yeah, I think I truly fell in love with hip hop because it was a lot of great artists coming out. I think that was around the time Kid Cudi, he was on that. Cudi, Wale, um, I think Mickey Fetch was on there, Asher Roth, Blue. Um, I think Ace Hood might have been on there. Um, shout out to Asa. He just dropped some music. Too. Oh, I just heard a song. Okay. Yeah, 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 that was super fire. Nice. But yeah, that double XL freshman cover made me really like fall into hip hop. That was before when I was writing poetry and shit. And these were a lot of artists that were close to what I was creating, but also allowed me to expand and see that there were other things that I could do as well. And that's what made me start writing uh, raps. But Blue, his project, uh, Below the Heavens, I think that might have been the first project I had ever heard from him with him and another producer named Exile. Uh, super dope. This is a cult classic project now. I think it's like 15 years, because I believe it may have came out in 2007. And quick fun fact about that project that is the first time I believe anybody may have heard Miguel. Miguel was actually on a couple of songs on that project. Mm -hmm. And okay. it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was super dope because I was listening to it the other day, just playing it back because, like I said, it's a cult classic project. I loved it. Uh, and just listening back, I heard a voice and I didn't know who it was. Okay. And I went back to the credits on Wikipedia and Freaking it ended up Miguel. being Miguel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know he had to be young, so it was really dope stuff. You know what I mean? Getting to see how people have grown. And Blue, I mean, he rapped about his his real life, like being a young kid in that era you know what i mean growing up i think he might have been born in the 80s obviously and he said his father was a preacher but he was also a rapper and just because his father was a preacher doesn't mean that his father wasn't you know what i mean also a man and a sinner and different things at that time so too. his father was a crooked preacher and yeah yeah, yeah. many crazy you know what i mean many things but the stories the stories and the way that he was able to display throughout his writing was really, uh, really dope. Really dope, really poetic, made you like feel like you were there in a lot of his music. Really dope artist. What is he doing now? Well, over the last, God, I would say, what, that was since 09. So, what, in the, in the past 12 years, he's worked with uh, numerous artists. He was. Primarily an underground artist, so he dealt with a lot of people like, you know, I mean, Big Brother. Um, actually, Haji Beat, somebody okay. that I mentioned. Uh, yeah, like last yeah, episode, yeah, I think, think that yeah. was my last episode. But Haji was somebody that he worked with. And numerous other artists, like, if y'all get a chance, please go and check him out. He's dropped multiple projects, but over the time, he never got that look that he seemed to have got with his first project. And I don't believe he ever got signed to like a major. He did a lot of things on his own. Like he was mm -hmm. a true independent artist at the time. So uh, yeah, man, I, if you ever get a chance to see this blue, we still rooting for you out here. I'd love to hear some more music. I'd love to see him with uh, maybe a bigger budget or something like that. Uh, Miguel, come back, pull your brother up. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? He gave you a shot. Get that nigga a shot on one of your joints, man. That'd be really dope. Mm, but that would. shout out to Blue, man. Okay. So that was what happened too. Now, mm. like I said earlier, we about to get into a little bit of the BS, the real he said, she the said. The Benzino shit, if you did. <laughs> well, we can real let's BS. go ahead and start with that. <laughs> um, you guys probably have seen, you know, the things out there about Benzino and Shauna Brooks. I ain't really going to talk about that right yeah, now, today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Touchy wanna, subjects. It's, it's, you know, it is. 
um what i wanted to bring up more was um the whole thing with like him and his daughter you know mm -hmm. the thing i don't know if you guys saw where there was a page that seemed to be owned by benzino that um somebody tweeted something up a academics i think tweeted something about coilery's first week album uh sales. streams or sales and it showed that account laughing at the the tweet and it just looked like a father being discouraging to their daughter then benzino which is crazy absolutely crazy but then he comes out and says that that page had n not been under his control like you know been hacked for a while and yeah, i don't know how true that is or not I, I haven't really like looked at it i could have gone and but yeah. it's just weird he said because they were even talking shit about him on that page he did like, say that uh, he yeah. did say that i mean it could be true you know what i'm saying i would uh i'm, I'm you know more inclined to easily believe that a father wouldn't do that you know right. what i'm saying so um I kind of got past it, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, Corlore tweeted, God has been my uh, father, like a good father to me, or something like that, you know, where it was disregarding Benzino. Um, so and how do you feel about that? About that tweet in particular? Yeah. Um, I feel um, no type of way because the situation between her and her father is weird. The, the stuff that comes out oh, to yeah. us is weird. And she's even said herself that their relationship isn't perfect, but they're working on it. So um, when she tweeted that, I thought that that was a positive way to handle How the situation. She? She's young and she like 21, 22. She's no older I'll, than 23, I'll for give sure. I'd give it to the age, I guess. Some shit, I mean, but we talk about this all the time. A lot of shit that I'll be doing out here is highly inappropriate. Like, yes, a lot of y'all shit I, I get. Y'all live in the forefront and in the limelight. But at the same time, bro, like... Leave all the cryptic, funny shit. Like, especially when you're dealing with your father. Because years later, you don't understand that when y'all have a good relationship again, the world is still gonna feel the way that you felt. And still and use the same shit that you said and continue pushing that shit even when you good. So, it's best to deal with your shit in-house deal with your relationships especially when it's something internal like parental relationships when you're dealing with boyfriend girlfriend i can understand you get heated but when it comes to your mom and dad keep that shit like keep all that shit in out life. of the media keep yeah of of that media. shit is corny that benefit you all yeah but at the same time if she feels like her father her father is a clout chaser you know her what father I'm saying? has done a lot of things he's a clout chaser for her sure father has done a lot if of you things. was on love and hip-hop you a clout chaser I mean, he had all the cloud at one time. I mean, the nigga was doing the yeah, nigga and the then, source and absolutely. And he just respect and all for that, of, yeah. and we, we're going to keep bringing that up Mother because that's Inc. a big thing. A whole lot, yeah. But that hasn't been popping for years, and when it hasn't, he decided to go on love and hip hop royalty. because he needed clout. It's still royalty. It is, I but agree he with, not he not I acting like he's going on love and hip hop. I agree with what you're saying. Yes. I agree with that wholeheartedly. Yeah. At the same. I feel it. I it feel, doesn't take I feel away, what you're saying. Yeah, take away because when you done. when you grow your daughter up in the in the clout business, and then she does all of the all of the shit for clout because she is a clout demon. Mm -hmm. Like like mm -hmm. you know what I mean. I wouldn't call her. I don't think that's the uh, right term for her. I think that she's just you know if you her last interview with the Breakfast Club, she kept saying I'm so viral, I'm viral. And if you notice when she tries to defend herself on social media lately. She keeps saying, I'm viral. I'm, I understand I'm so viral that y'all... And I understand because this nah, girl... Because well, she's been a... She she is the definition of a clout demon. She's no. been doing this shit for years now. The, for the, a couple years. The reason we why I don't think she... her come up in this shit. But Corla, Corla Ray is one of those artists who gets her a lot of shine off TikTok and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily feel like that's clout chasing. I just feel like that's a very normal thing that everybody is doing. And I can't, I personally can't count that as clout Have you chasing. heard some of the music? We talk Does about it sound original? Koi? Yeah. Does her music sound original? Yeah. No. It sound. I won't say that. It doesn't it sound, sound original. It, is not the way that I would describe it. No, it sounds like she she trying to bite a lot of other people's styles. If you've watched her over the years, like her style sound like a whole lot of different. Sh it doesn't sound original. It sounds like you're chasing clout. You're chasing whatever is perceived as the hottest thing right now. You're trying to do, and don't get me wrong, she's not the only one. Okay, right. But. 
that's why she's a demon. She ain't the devil. You know what I mean? It's, it's I numerous do, ones in them things out here. I look at it differently. You look at her switching her style up throughout the years as her clout chasing. And that's to, not, not, nah, because it ain't her changing her style. She didn't create her own style. We haven't really seen that. Like, it, 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 it seems more of that now, but what I've, I don't know. Over the years, as I've watched her develop, I've seen a lot more of the fuck shit. And some of it ain't her fault. A lot of people have gotten on her when you say about fuck her shit, body. What exactly do you mean? Besides her not sounding original in her music, what fuck shit do you mean? I don't know, man. I Let's need see. you to kind of ponder and tell me because if I'm missing something, I, I want to know. I don't know. Sometimes. It just seemed it just seemed corny. Her her whole I don't know, the delivery, the the style, the way she came, I didn't I don't know. It felt like an industry plant. Okay. At that time too. And like I said, it didn't it didn't come with a lot of originality. And then now you come with the extra shit like with your dad. And I haven't seen him saying anything disrespectful about Oh wow. You. Okay. So yeah. Her coming out doing anything disrespectful to her dad was because Benzino online had had excited it and started it. That okay. first situation where she was talking real greasy about her dad, it started because Benzino had come out and said some stuff. I remember now what that old stuff was about. And it, okay. it's about what we just talked about. It just happened again. So basically the first situation was about him coming out basically saying that Koi was lying for telling people that they were broke and that they had the struggles that she said that they had. Benzino basically came out and said that that wasn't true. Um, he also had other people come out and say stuff like, I knew Koi when she was little. She had tutors and just, you know what I'm saying? People to get his back. So basically the thing that started that back then was Koi being in interviews, uh, saying her experience, Benzino coming out, basically speaking against that, kind of making her look like a liar. Then that's when she comes out with those tweets and she starts, you know, saying, um, oh, she was also mad. And I think this is really what uh, sparked the disrespect that um, Benzino was coming at her mother and Benzino was blaming her mother for everything that Koi was saying. And that made mm -hmm. Koi mad because she was all like, don't come at my mom. You know what I'm saying? Because so, she made mm -hmm. a video and she made some tweets. I so, remember that. I remember that. I remember that. Right. So it was really the same thing again. It was really because she had came out in an interview, said her piece about her life. He said some stuff that didn't match. It looks like somebody lying. He also was being disrespectful to her mother. So Koi says. And so she mm -hmm. came out and spoke out, spoke out against all of those things but in the midst of speaking out with all of those things she was using disrespectful terminology towards her father and stuff like that mm -hmm. so this is a situation that just happened again um, which makes sense you know what I'm saying like it, it really wasn't even that long ago they seem to have issues in their relationship that right. you know they working out or whatever but um yeah but, she just said some like yeah she just said some like uh do you want me to release these uh the text DMs? messages that yeah. you that you sent me and stuff like that so you that's know, corny that's corny it's corny if you are texting your daughter unsavory things and then coming online acting like you love her so much which you probably do but it's that's corny if you're text if you're texting her stuff to where she can say you want me to show these screenshots or do you but want to get some help but that's but that's corny though yeah, because if you can be saying because you could clearly be saying something to me crazy mm -hmm. in my tweets too and you think that you're an adult and stuff but mm -hmm. you you came out of my like mm -hmm. let's keep it a thousand okay. like you my child okay. like and all of that stuff i raised you all of that i without me you wouldn't be here i don't care what you think you would not be okay. a koi Larray if there was not no benzino that biologically, came before that, that. Is absolutely correct. no not just biologically but you wouldn't have this look you would never be a koi Larray if you didn't have your father because you wouldn't have been in this position Yes, that is the absolute truth. Disagree, but okay. Where where else where else would you have got all of these opportunities to rap, Dude, get into this she came, position? When she came to the game, she on purpose did not tell people that. Now, of course, some people. Of course, knew. you don't want to. Some people knew. Yeah. But 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 some people didn't. You know what I'm saying? Some people knew. Some people didn't. And when she Man, came out, she did not come out as Benzino's she didn't daughter for tell, a reason. She don't want to tell us. She don't want to tell the general public. But I guarantee the people behind the scenes who are fucking helping you. I bet they knew that Benzino is your father. 
I think some of them knew and some of them so didn't. Like, I especially think that if she was dealing with industry people who are older, they they probably corny. know that she is Benzino's daughter. But I think that uh, some of the industry people she dealt with did not know that she's Benzino's daughter. Yeah. I don't believe that everyone in the background knew that that was Benzino's daughter. Another thing that I will commend her on is she can, she didn't come out saying she she didn't come out attaching herself to her father. We found out that they as a public that they were father and daughter, and we put two and two together. But she didn't come out. Um, you know, saying that that was her dad, she could have, and I just, I just, I commend her for that. So you think essentially she's basically trying to hide the fact that she kind of used her father. As Absolutely, a, okay. your father is motherfucking seventy five percent of what your fame is, and your talent. You may have some talent. I will not take that away from her because she does make catchy music and shit like that. But I also think there are people that are helping with that too. Yeah. I'm that sure there are a lot of people. And I'm not even ruling out what you're saying about now that we've talked about it. I'm not ruling out that she might hide, you know, that she is getting a certain type of help. Yeah, or so like have that. some kind of respect but for my, him. Uh, yeah, but you, when you have a toxic father, like, and I don't mean toxic as in y'all don't talk. I mean, mm -hmm. y'all talk and it's fucked up. Mm -hmm. Things get weird. And, yeah, and, and, of and, and it's very hard to navigate all relationships that with fathers. Damn near are 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 weird. But my whole point about that is that's why I just can't judge her for anything. Like I can't judge her too harshly for any type of way that she acts towards her dad because I no, I I agree. Sorry, don't mean to cut you off. I agree with what you're saying. I think that it's messed up on all the courts because of. Man, I don't want to get into it because we get into it all the time. This whole social media and mm -hmm. fucking reality TV life. That whole shit makes this okay. Because your father has already been out here. Because they display so much of their life and all of this shit on the show. That he, you you believe he's done clout chasey shit. She's learned it from him. Where now because they I don't agree with that second part, but yes. Okay, maybe maybe she didn't learn it from him. I don't think Chloe is a clout chaser. You do, and that's the thing. <laughs> I think that what they are doing, it is clout chasing because the only reason you're going to release DMs or text messages from somebody to the world, why, is because you want the world's validation. If it didn't matter, then y'all having a conversation is between y'all two. If your father says, yo, I love my daughter and I'm not trying to beef with her, da-da-da-da-da, that should be what you want, right? You shouldn't want the beef, but if you go behind that and it's like, well, I'ma show the world this, that, and that, that's 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 immature. That's not that's not going in the direction of what you truly want. Because you don't want the beef unless that's what you want, and then that's for the fame. That's that's for other people to see. I disagree, but I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> like it's just, that's just why. Nah, that's I can't why, I can't man. judge her too harshly for that. It's just, it's a very emotional situation with the father. And emotions thing. are supposed and to be controlled. She I'm not I'm not gonna come at this girl for how she handled her father's situation. When your father is supposed to be a father and supposed to be grown and supposed to be mature, and yeah, she's an adult too, but this is a situation where we're not talking about peers. We're talking about a parent and a child. It's mm -hmm. mostly his responsibility to kind of be the mature one. Sorry to put that wasn't he parents. being mature and well, not sharing well, their business online but if you're doing that and being fucking grimy in behind closed doors a, a how do we know what's old, grimy but we because but, we but know see, how children that's, are that's, too but that's what i'm talking about we don't know so that's so, why that's so why i'm not it, going so to, leave that no. shit behind closed doors no, that that don't no, make no, no sense no. They, these people are not that don't make do, no sense to these, me we already know leaving things behind because closed they're because they're cloud chasing that, because because you feel like you have to validate or share that with the world so that the world can speak for you or do something that you can't. You have a relationship with your child. Your child came out of you. That should be the most important thing in this. Y'all having a conversation and y'all talking to each other. Mm -hmm. So if I tell you, yo, me and my child are working this out, whether you upset with me or not. That should be the end of it. It shouldn't I can't be say that. nah, I don't nah, really bump that. We dealing with this, and yeah, I'm gonna share that. But that's corny. If I'm trying to deal corny, with it behind closed doors, it can be, it can be corny. Doors. It can be corny. It can be corny. In my opinion, I'm not gonna label it anything like that because if you are, as, as my father, are being fucked up to me behind closed doors, don't come in social media and say anything. Don't say anything because you know it's a lie. Now we don't know what's true. We don't know if Koi's lying. We don't know if her dad. We don't know what's true. But that's the reason why I'm not going to label her 
anything. I, and I think during this conversation, I haven't really labeled Benzino anything either. You know what I'm saying? I said yeah. what happened. No, nah, both of them corny. That, I said that. No, no, no. That's you. You said yeah. both of them corny. Me personally, I don't think that I've labeled Benzino or Corey LeRae in this conversation because there's so many things that I I just understand emotion and I understand not doing the right thing because of it. And I refuse to judge her over that. That's it. Dang. That's it. That's I don't so. think she's a clout chaser. I think that she's viral. Like As she a said. man who's dealt with I a whole lot that, of things, you know, I understand she, controlling your emotion and how that could be the choice between life and death and a whole lot of other things that you can lose. And maybe so it's, it's not. Yeah, yeah. I think everybody in that situation but I don't should think understand that. I don't that. think it's cool or okay for us to talk about her in such a negative light. Like, if anything, I don't I don't feel oh, like it's... too bad. We, I don't think that it's okay podcast. to talk about... <laughs> we talk about both of them. <laughs> okay. You guys, we had to stop talking about Corey Lorraine Benzino, okay? Yeah, we don't agree on that. Y'all, y'all <laughs> can see that we don't. We gonna leave it right there. I'm exhausted yeah. of talking about it. <laughs> But um, our next subject and our last subject for today, we're going to talk about the baby just a little bit. The baby keep making our list of topics every show. Yeah. <laughs> Almost every show. This is the third one we talk segment. about him. <laughs> you know, probably. Yeah. We probably could survive doing a segment just talking about the baby. Okay, he's always giving us something. But uh, I know y'all heard about how somebody came up on his property and tried to, um, well, they didn't actually try to do anything before he shot them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So basically someone invaded his property. He shot them, immobilized them. The man is still alive and everything like that. Yeah. Um, there's not there's not The two. baby called the police himself. He called the police himself. <laughs> they released the um the one nine one one call and everything like that. So this is another situation, like we've talked about before, something crazy happened with the baby, but he's not going to get into jail time, and why would he over something like this? But this just goes to show you that, like, drama is just attracted to this man. Yeah. Like, like situations are just attracted to this man. And, of course, he's doing something in his life to attract these things. Yeah, like, I, like I've stated before, he, he, he enjoys this kind of thing, man. <laughs> it's kind of fun to him, I, I'm, I'm sure. Like, of course... Anybody on your property ain't supposed to be there in the middle mm-hmm, of the night. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you're supposed mm-hmm. to handle mm-hmm. what you're supposed to handle. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? That's your family, all mm-hmm. that stuff. Sometimes you you don't have time to talk. You shoot, ask questions later. And, like he said, man, he stepped righteously, which is funny. Isn't it? I know. <laughs> and then he tweeted top of some. He, I'm a, I'll put it up there, but he, he said... Um, <laughs> <laughs> that he ain't even want to, you know, hurt dude. He want him to, you know, live, but just, you know, don't yeah, come over yeah, here no yeah, more. Which was hilarious to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, I heard something like the guy is, I don't know if he's homeless, but they say he, like, is always, like, walking around town or See, something See, I like ain't that. even heard nothing else so, about the guy who, who yeah, did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so. something else. Well, he did it at the wrong property. Right, you're going to be on some crutches, <laughs> walk your ass. Around the stores or something. Okay, okay. But shoot, um, that's really all I have to say about that situation. I just thought that that was just out of all the things that have already happened with the baby. Anyways, y'all, Oops. let us know. <laughs> let us know what you think about the baby situation. Let us know what you think about the Hobson segment. Have you heard of Hobson before? Have you heard of Blue before? Have you listened to these people before? What do you think of them? Go listen to them niggas. Man. Yeah, 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 check them out. Yeah, I think that y'all be inter- absolutely y'all be entertained by either one. Um, like I said earlier, we talked about who we listen to on a regular basis. So of course we want to yeah, you, I mean, we want to know what y'all listen to on a regular basis. Go so, listen to some kid poetry on a regular basis. Listen to yeah. some freaking kid poetry. Literally, Apple Music, K I D poetry. You there know you how go. to spell poetry. Spell it <laughs> in the freaking search bar and listen to his music. You feel yeah. me? Yeah. But y'all, um, that's it for this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a great time, you know what I mean? Benzino and them got a little 15 minutes out of us. Oh my God, they got too much out of us. But um, <laughs> but yeah, since we spent so much time and energy on that, let us know what the hell y'all think about that situation. Right, like, yeah. you know, like, do y'all think that they're clout chasing? Do y'all understand how this is irrational, but... You know, you still kind of accept Koi. I just love Koi LeRae. Maybe I'm biased. She's so cute. let me know. She's adorable as fuck, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's cute. I don't like when people get on her about the About being skinny. Thing, right. Bitch, a lot of y'all wish y'all were small. But you know what I'm saying? Anyway, <laughs> it is your boy Kid Poetry, if you ain't know it's me. It's your girl, Wildflower of UGS Music. And this is He Said. She Said. Peace.